Welcome, this is the Elements of Spirit reading for the Element of Fire for the week of May 1st, 2017. Uh, if you haven't listened to your ether reading, please go back and do so now. Um, ether will define the tone. I'll be referring back to it also in this reading, but ether sort of defines the tone of the space, and this, your fire reading, will give you a sense of how to work with your primary element. Um, so, primary element being fire here. So let's see what fire has to tell us. Um, so it's so cool. Um, I heard the uh, poem, uh, Tiger, Tiger, um, but it was with fire, fire, burning bright in the forest of the night. What immortal hand or eye could frame thy fearful symmetry? So that's what we get from you, um, for you, from fire. This is really big, apparently. I'm not doing this. That's just something that's happening, so apparently it's important. What immortal hand or eye could frame thy fearful symmetry? And it's, there's something in here which is very much, again, about control, um, where we come to the uh, ether reading, which was giving us this beautiful message about, um, I faithfully raise, I faithfully pause to break all toxic cycles and allow the power of my unconscious to be revealed. So there's something here which is like, you guys, um, you don't get to control your transformation. <laughs> That's the whole point. It's like you get to say along the lines, along which lines you'd like to, your transformation to occur, be specific. Are you working emotionally? Are you working mentally? Are, do you want more clarity and balance in your mind? Do you want more structure and stability in your life? Do you want more freedom and fluidity in your emotions? Um, or in terms of this fire element, like do you just want everything to change? Uh, and there's something in here which is saying that like you guys, oh, your, your reading last week was about <laughs> <laughs> sipping flaming oil to allow inner transformation to occur gradually, gradually, gradually allowing it to change. And there's something in here which seems like you guys are pissed off, like the old change hasn't completed, that a new change hasn't begun. It seems to me like you forget, forget that fire burns, forget that fire burns uh, to an unidentifiable crisp unidentifiable crisp. So it's like, it seems like you guys are like, I want to change. And then the fire starts to burn up around your feet and you're like, that's enough. Or like mm, different. I want to change different. I want to change like that. I don't like that change. I don't like that change. Uh -uh, I don't like the change. It's like you guys, you as fiery beings, especially can use your mind to initiate change, use your consciousness to initiate change, but then you have to accept that change is change. You don't get to control it. It's going to change you. And when it's really good, it changes you completely. And in this case, what immortal hand or eye could frame thy fearful symmetry? Ooh, it's, it's saying, ooh, I'm hearing this in such a great way. It's saying that like, it's going to be a perfect change anyway. There is a higher force, a higher consciousness that's guiding the change. So try not to get into the middle of the change and crap out. You, mere mortal, initiated the change. You know, higher consciousness, higher self, all that is, you know, God, goddess, is completing the change. Or your intention, forget God, goddess, all that is, your intention is powerful enough that once it... Whew, goes out into the universe, it's going to complete until it either comes back to you or manifests or whatever. It's going to do its thing, right? All of the thoughts that we create have life. They have a beginning, a middle, and end. Every, everything we think, everything we do happens. It has its own life cycle. So you guys initiating a phase of transformation in your life, 
you're 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 like at the midpoint or beyond the midpoint so why are you going to stop it now just because you don't know what it looks like on the other side the idea here is that it's okay to ponder what a mortal hand or eye could frame thy fearful symmetry um the symmetry of fire which is not symmetrical which is freaking crazy <laughs> But the idea is, is that from a cosmic enough, from a broad enough, from a magnificent enough perspective, the fire is simply that center catalyst before which everything is one way, after which everything is another way. So that's its only real job. You may be feeling the first, you know, 30 minutes of the flames licking up around your feet being like, I don't like this, but you're not giving the fire a chance to do its thing. Let it go a little bit further and then incinerate it. And then it's good, and then the message is, you're a phoenix, you rise from the ashes, and then you look back and you're like, wow, that was a perfect fire. Why is this not working? Why are we not there yet? We go back to the ether reading, which is this feeling that like your mind, your fire center, your center of will has been caught in this kind of glitch in the matrix, this feedback loop, where you're sort of compulsively surviving. Um, using your mind to survive, using your will to survive, will to live, will to survive, as opposed to being able to stop, pause, and let the power from the unconscious, the power from the shadow, like, rise up around you. And in this case, with the fire... The idea is, is that when you stop, you have a moment of wanting to control the transformation when, <laughs> okay, easy, there it is. When the, the, the ideal affirmation, I surrender myself to the totality of my transformation. It's not done, guys. It's not done. And there's a little resistance here. And the resistance comes from actually using the fire to continue surviving, as opposed to using the fire to will yourself to stop and incinerate, transform. That means that there's an element of sacrifice in this. Very passionate for you fire people today. So the question for you too, aside from this affirmation, which is I surrender myself to the totality of my transformation, uh, what am I willing <clears throat> to sacrifice now and forever? It doesn't mean you have to do it because we're just past a new moon and we're in Taurus. It's now it's about enjoying things, not letting go of things, not getting rid of things. But in your case, we're not just talking about getting rid of. We're talking about sacrifice. We're saying there's something that I have or that I love or that I want that I cannot take with me through this fire. But I've been so obsessively going through my animal instincts of using my will to survive, keeping all of the things close to me that I need or that I want or that I need to live and yet I'm like, wait, wait, I wanted to change, but I've just been gathering all this stuff. Now you mean I have to burn this stuff up with myself? I have to let go of all of it? Idea is real sacrifice, real incineration, real liberation. You can't take anything with you. In this case, the idea is not, you don't have to sacrifice yourself completely. It's just that you have to surrender yourself to the totality of your transformation, which you have already initiated, which is already in process. So now the correct approach, according to the element of fire, is to surrender to that transformation completely. And if your mind goes scatterbrained and you need something to consider while you're pausing in the midst of the ether, faithfully pausing to break all toxic cycles and allow the power of your unconscious to be revealed, in that space, you can ask a question. What am I willing to sacrifice now and forever? What am I willing to sacrifice now and forever? What am I willing to sacrifice now and forever? What do I not need anymore or ever? What am I willing to get rid of? And that consideration allows the power of your unconscious to grow up around you. It allows whatever was repressed in your shadows 
uh, uh, the need to kind of compulsively uh, 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 feed your fire without allowing it to do its job because you're continuing to feed the fire. So it's like um, uh, 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 you're gathering wood. So how can you be burnt to a crisp? You know, you're out gathering more wood. You got to sit in the fire and allow it to change you. Um, if the fire gets itchy or tickly, what am I willing to sacrifice now and forever? You know, um, reading about crucifixion the other day, crucifixion's being like, well, I'll sacrifice my ego. I'll sacrifice my mind. I'll sacrifice everything. But in your case, you don't have to sacrifice at all. It's just stay put, allow the transformation that you've already initiated to be completed. And if you get fidgety, consider what it is that you're willing to sacrifice once and forever. Okay. I love you guys. See you next week. Bye.